back it up, back it up, back it up. Back it up. I put on a show, I be acting up. If he ain't got no bread, I'm packing up. I need a rich nigga with a bankroll just so I can add it up. Say ho, my nigga got him a ho. He gon' listen and do what I say so. He know I'm only after the. Hi, I'm Tasi, and welcome back to my channel. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome home. And if you're a new subscriber, make yourself at home by clicking that subscribe button. So today I'm coming to you guys with a video that wasn't really planned. I mean, it was, but not really. Like I made a list of things that I wanna talk about, but overall, this was really like an epiphany for me. It wasn't really something that I had scheduled as far as like what type of videos I was going to upload because that's a little behind the scenes thing. I actually do schedule out which videos are going to go on what day. So, you know, this wasn't originally a part of the plan, but I just wanted to put this video out here because I feel like it just needed to be talked about at this point. If you follow me on all of my social medias, which is Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, you know, stuff like that, then you've probably noticed that I'm not as consistent as I used to be. I'm not really like giving you guys as much content as I usually do. And I'm not asking for sympathy. I'm not asking for pity, but I also just felt like I do kind of sort of owe you guys an explanation. Honestly, it's not even like I owe you guys. It's just I really want to talk about it because I've been having a lot going on in my life, like on this side of the screen. I've been having a lot going on and I need to start really addressing stuff and talking about it when it bothers me because I have a bad habit of just like internalizing my own issues and just not really talking it out. And me not talking a lot of issues out is the main reason why I have these moments where I'm like super depressed and I just decide to fall off the face of the earth so I gotta stop doing that and plus it's a whole bunch of y'all that want to be in my business anyway so I might as well just put it out there that way we don't even have to worry about it so as you can read by the title that was not clickbait that was not a joke I fell off I fell off and this is why stay tuned so first of all when I say I fell off like I have said before it's on all platforms it's not just youtube because there was a moment in time where i was putting the content out honey like i was pushing it everything was just perfect okay y'all was eating for a while wasn't you you was eating for a while and then all of a sudden it just kind of dwindled down and stopped like it wasn't a complete stop but it just got there over time i've been doing a lot of like self-reflecting lately like literally since my 24th birthday this birthday that just passed i have been sitting back looking at my life looking at me as a person looking at the different relationships that i've been in my whole entire life and i just been pretty much in my own little head just in my own little world just really i don't know how to explain it it's just like i overwhelmed myself by thinking about how everything played out up until this point so one of the things that I was realizing was how I let my social media presence pretty much just fade into the background because there was a point in time like I said where I was very consistent and my content was quality my content was always something that people looked forward to and after a while it just it almost became non-existent. And when I do put it out, you know, you probably noticed that too, it don't get as much engagement, as many likes and stuff as it usually does. So when I say I fell off, that's what I mean. Like the way that I presented myself on social media for like the past, what, two, I wanna say three years low key, cause that is when I started kind of getting like a few people paying attention to me was like back in 2018 so I want to say it's been it's been a few years so all them years ago I was consistent all them years ago I gave you guys like great content and then that just like like what did I do with it you know what I'm saying like I could have been somewhere by now I could have had a certain amount of subscribers or a certain amount of followers by now so what what the hell is happening girl like what's going on so that is what I'm here to talk to you guys about okay that's what I'm here to talk to you guys about so like I said I made a list and I'm going to talk about each and every one of these things on the list in detail that way we have no confusion and everyone is on the same page 
So the first issue at hand, the content that I personally like to put out, I like for my content to be quality. I like for my content to have some type of organization, some type of flow to it. I don't just like to put any old thing out. The reality of it is, and I swear I'm not saying this to be bitter or to sound like a hater or nothing, but the reality of it is, is that the world that we live in today, it is so easy to go viral. It's so easy to build your subscriber count, build your follower count. Like it's all types of tricks that you can do to get like a million views on a video and stuff like that. Like it is really not hard. Back in the early 2000s, yeah, maybe once we got to the 2010s, it was like, still a little bit like you got to be that that girl to go viral but now it's just at a point to where it's like anybody can do it anybody can do it the way these algorithms are set up literally anybody can blow up overnight it's not impossible so with that being said it's like why is it taking me so long to get to a certain level on any of my platforms but part of the problem is the fact that I care about the content that I put out. I care about the quality of my content. So for example, when it comes to YouTube, I could easily be one of those channels where I go to Wendy's and I buy a regular 4 for 4 and I sit down and I eat it on camera and I just tell y'all about my day or I read questions off of Instagram. That is not the type of content that I wanna put on my page. That's not the type of content that I wanna put out. And honestly, over the years, mukbangs have really became like the laziest piece of content I have ever seen in my life. Like no shade, but I, I just, every time I subscribe to somebody new and I see a mukbang channel, I just, I instantly am just like, I don't even care to see you anymore. I don't care anymore. Cause they'll do stuff like, like, okay, like how I've been kind of on a hiatus and I haven't been as consistent. They'll do stuff like that where it's like, I haven't posted in three months. So here's a video of me eating food on camera with like hashtags, like real popular hashtags. And I'm gonna just upload it and just y'all can deal with that. That's so lazy to me. I don't like that. Second of all, that's not even what a mukbang is. Like mukbangs are notorious for having large amounts of food. You eat in a basic four for four that is literally designed for one person. That That's not a mukbang. Like, like what are we supposed to do with that? Anybody can eat that. The point is to make it to where it's like, oh my goodness, how could this person eat that much food? And then there's certain people where it's like, they like the sounds and the noises. Y'all be having y'all audios on the lowest setting. Y'all audios be so like lackluster. And I'm not saying it in a judgmental way because if you've been here long enough, you know my audio wasn't like that. Before I got this little thing, before I got a microphone, oh honey, oh honey, y'all had to blast y'all phones to even hear me. So that's not coming from a judgmental place. But all I'm saying is if you're gonna do a mukbang, do it right. Don't just do it because you see everybody else doing it and it's just a trigger word that you know is gonna get attention. But that's what a lot of people do and I could have easily been one of those people. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't feel like that's me. I don't feel like my channel is, is worth that. Or even the pranks that are obviously scripted. I don't wanna do that. I think that's stupid. And then there's certain pranks where I've literally witnessed certain people just take pranks entirely too far. Like everything ain't a joke, okay? Everything ain't funny. I don't wanna just do all these gimmicks to get famous. But the reality of it is, is that things like the mall interview and, and the, the, the I smell like fish prank, like all of that stuff, that is a very quick and easy way to make content and then upload the content back to back to back to back to back. It's very easy. It's very easy. But I'm sorry, me as an individual, I will take the high road. I will do the most amount of work compared to other people that are on YouTube to get where I wanna be. Because I just, me personally, I don't like that. I am not a gimmick channel and I never wanna die on a hill like that. When I came on here and I uploaded my first video, it was from that moment on that I was dedicated to putting out quality content. I always would look at my videos when I was done with it and figure out what can I do differently the next time. And I still do that to this day. So unfortunately, when it comes to the content that I'm going to post, it's not gonna be just like whatever. 
Now, I will admit I have been doing that on Instagram lately because my Instagram page is completely dead and I'm trying to revive it. So I just been posting like a lot of different stuff just to keep the engagement going. But other than that, you are not going to see me half ass anything that I do because that's just not me. I'm not a bare minimum person. I don't know how to do that. Let's also factor in the fact that with the quality content, you need time. You need time dedicated to the content. So not only do you need time to make it, but you also need time to edit it and edit it the way that you want it to look. Once again, no shade to nobody else, but I'm tired of the way some of y'all be editing y'all videos. Once again, very half-assed, very lackluster. I, I just don't like it. When I came on camera and I told y'all that since I was young, I wanted to be a YouTuber because I grew up watching a whole bunch of YouTubers, I meant that. So I watched how other YouTubers edit their videos and I knew exactly how I wanted my videos to come out just comparing myself to those people. So yeah, that is like the biggest thing that I can, I can take accountability for that and say that is the hold up with me. I can't just put out whatever. I can't just have my name and my face attached to whatever. No, I want y'all to actually sit back and enjoy it. And then not only that, replay value. That's very valuable on YouTube. I don't want y'all to watch the same mukbang. I don't want y'all to watch the same prank and you know exactly how it's gonna end. I want y'all to really go back on my videos and be like, this was useful information, I'm gonna go back to it. Or like my life lessons at 24. I want y'all to be able to look at that and be like, you know what? I remember when she said this and this really helped me through a tough time. I want y'all to be able to come to my page and do stuff like that. So no, it's not as simple as me just going to the mall with a microphone and asking people, do they like missionary or back shots? It, it's just not that simple for me. I'm not that type of girl. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but that's just not me. So the second issue at hand, this ties in with the first issue that I just mentioned. Again, I can take accountability for where I am messing up with my content. So as of, what was that, July? So as of July 30th, I quit my job. It mainly had to do with the fact that I was just over it as a whole like I didn't want to do it anymore I was working retail and I remember before I got that job I told myself I was never going to work retail again but I was pressed for cash I was pressed for money I wanted money so 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 bad so I took the job and I must say like it was an easy job and I definitely got the money that I asked for definitely got the money that I planned on making but I let that job run me I let that job take over I let that job run me into the ground and I pretty much just had no time to do what I really wanted to do, which was invest in my content. I remember when I first got that job and I had that chit chat video with y'all and I told y'all that I was purposely getting this job so that I could put more tools and materials into my content and into my equipment so that I could give y'all better content. And my plan originally was to work two to three days out of the whole entire week. And then all my off days were going to be dedicated to making content for y'all. But I lost sight of all of that. And it mainly had to do with the fact that once again, I don't know how to be bare minimum. I don't know how to do things very simple, but I know better. And I know that with certain jobs, well, pretty much all jobs, really, when you're a hard worker, they are going to milk you. They are going to take advantage of you. They will take advantage of the fact that you work very, very hard. So I found myself pretty much being the manager of my whole entire store without actually getting paid manager salary. Well, I'll take that back. I actually did get two different raises while I was there, but still, like I didn't agree to be a manager. So, you know, like, why am I doing all of this? And the type of job that I had is like, in a way, I wasn't taking on the manager position in vain. Like I definitely was doing it because in certain cases, in certain situations, I definitely had to do that. But it's like overall, I knew that that wasn't what I wanted for myself. I wanted to get a job so that I can invest in what I actually wanted to do with my life. I told myself that when I got that job, that was going to be the last time that I worked for somebody and... Now I'm finding myself running low on funds so I can't get Starbucks like I used to. So now I'm thinking about picking up another part-time job. <laughs> but me being self-employed is still on the horizon. It's still something that's in the works. So I'm not even too worried about that. But I will say like that was what was killing the quality. That's what was killing the content. Anytime 
I had an off day. I spent that off day pretty much just recuperating from the work days. So it was times where I was working so much that I didn't get to do laundry. I didn't get to clean up my room. Like I'm, I'm gonna be transparent with y'all. I'm gonna be real with y'all. There was a point in time where I had like three trash bags, like big ass trash bags just sitting in my room. No joke, they was sitting in my room the whole entire time because I just had no time to really take care of myself. Like I would be in the midst of cleaning up and then I'll be like, okay, it's bedtime, go to sleep, wake up, I gotta go to work. And I'm working back to back to back. And then I come back home and it's like, oh yeah, I was supposed to clean up. Try to clean up again, repeat. Like it was just a constant cycle over and over. So the few times that I did have the energy to make videos and take pictures and do TikToks, it was just like, to me, certain certain pieces, it just wasn't given. It just wasn't, it wasn't me. And you could tell, well, y'all probably wouldn't have been able to tell. It probably was just a me thing. It was probably just one of them things where I'm the one that's thinking too far into it. But for me personally, it wasn't good enough. And I didn't feel like y'all deserve to see that. I felt like, no, let's do it again and again and again. It's a whole lot of content that I have deleted, y'all. Like, you don't even <laughs> you don't even understand. It is literally so much that I have deleted and y'all have never seen it and you probably will never see it because I just was like, no, this isn't good enough and I'm starting over. So yeah, that was definitely a huge, huge, huge issue on my part. I let that job take advantage of me, to be honest, and I'm so glad that I left. I miss the money, though. I'm not gonna lie. I miss the money. I'm doing good, though. Don't get me wrong, a bitch ain't never broke. But it's still like, I just miss the money. I low key am addicted to the routine now. I've been there for a whole entire year. That's the longest job I've ever stayed at too. So it's just like, it's hard, I don't know. But yeah, as of the 30th, I quit my job. So that's neither here nor there. So the next issue is mainly something of my own insecurity and my own, once again, just me being in my own head, doing too much. But I'm not used to the amount of attention that I have received thus far. I'm not used to it. Like all the time when I was in school, it was a whole bunch of people that would sit there and say that I was quiet. Now me personally, I never really perceived myself as being the quiet girl. Like I didn't think I was that quiet. But there are certain people where they like, if you go up to them and you ask them like, oh, what was she like in school? They either not gonna remember me because I literally stayed out the way that much or the few people that do remember me, they will say like, this girl, she don't say much. She don't do too much. Like she just be off in her own little world. And it's just like, like I said, I didn't perceive myself as being that bad, but I definitely am that type of person where I'm comfortable with the people that I'm already comfortable with. I don't see the need to add extra people. It's not that I'm against meeting new people. It's just why? Like, who are you? So I definitely had my people that I talked to, intermingled with, networked with, you know, it's certain people where I know them by name, but we not really that close. I'm used to stuff like that. When I started making myself present on the internet, like really, you know, putting myself out there, it was a lot of people that started being attracted to me, like not in a, a you know, like a romantic way. Well, some of them, yeah, but you know, it wasn't necessarily in a romantic way, but it's like, you know, I started getting a lot of traction on all of my pages. Like it was people that really wanted to keep up with me. Like, I'm not gonna lie. I'm shocked that there's times where I'm away from my account completely and my subscriber count goes up I'm shocked I, I am truly shocked I'm thankful thank you for being here and thank you for subscribing but I'm, I'm shocked that y'all actually care about what I have to say and what I want to do today like I'm very shocked especially on my chit chat videos because I don't I just be talking I just be talking like I don't even like I be getting the stuff out of my off my chest and I do do it for content, obviously, because I uploaded it, but I already be having it in my head. Like, girl, ain't nobody about to watch this video. You know, ain't nobody about to watch this video. You about to get like probably 10 views at most. And y'all still be running it up. Like y'all really do be listening to me. And I, I appreciate that. But I'm not gonna lie. Your girl is still getting used to the fact that people give a damn about me. I'm not used to this. I'm not, so it's a lot of adjustments, you know? But the biggest adjustment, Lord Jesus, oh my God, the biggest adjustment was when I had went viral on TikTok them two times, like them two separate times that I started getting traction on my page. 
child blessing and a curse listen so if you guys didn't know i originally used to work in the mall like my local mall and i worked at the sunglass hut that was inside of macy's so obviously with me being at like one of the only malls that we have in the city when i had went viral on tiktok the amount of children that recognized me they recognized the layout of my store and they kept saying it as they were passing by or like if they stopped in our store or whatever they would always like whisper it and i'm just like oh okay and one thing that y'all probably don't know about when i went viral like <laughs> I'm probably gonna have to make a separate video for this. I'm probably gonna have to make like a separate story time. But why did I go so viral with my Sunglass Hut video that my regional manager saw it? Like my boss's boss's boss seen the video and was the one that sent it to my boss. Like, ha ha ha, did you see this video? I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do, okay? So long story short, I'm basically a celebrity in my company. Well, that's not my company no more, I quit. <laughs> but yeah, in all of Luxottica, I am pretty much a celebrity low key cause it's a whole lot of people that knew me and even people that used to work for Sunglass Hut that was watching the video and was laughing at it. So um, yeah, I didn't know how to handle that. I didn't know what to do with all that because I was hoping that that video would make the same amount as the first one because the first one I think it got like what 20k something likes so I was expecting it to do around that same little place but um I, I don't I don't even know where that's at right now like I don't even know at what view count that video was at I have no idea how many likes that has at this point but it is definitely like I don't know like the last time that I looked at it it was like 400k something so I think it's still I think it's still around that but yeah long story short I still get notifications from that video like I still get like traction on that video so of course like I I didn't know what to do like I was just I was a nervous wreck y'all I was a nervous wreck and with being in the spotlight there comes some negativity as well so let's talk about haters and trolls for a second. Now, I might just be naive because at, at this stage in my life, I am thinking like there's something wrong with me. It has to be. But I thought the content creators that get hate or get like trolls on their account. I thought those were people that were like really, really up there. I'm thinking like if you got haters on YouTube, it'll be you at like at least 10K subscribers. Like a bitch is at least monetized on her channel. You feel me? Before the haters start rolling in. I'm thinking to myself like you gotta be at at least 20K on Instagram, 20K on TikTok before you just got these people nitpicking at you or whatever. That's what I was thinking. But sweetheart, let me tell you something. Currently, I have 72 subscribers. I have a thousand two hundred something, like a thousand two hundred something on Instagram, a little over two thousand on TikTok, and my Twitter, I got like 700 something followers. I'm still unknown at best. I'm still very much regular degular, like I don't really have that much popularity right now. So just imagine how shocked I was when I started peeping that I had haters and that trolls started being attracted to my account and started talking S-H-I-T about me. Like, like where this come from? Now the trolls in a way, I kind of get it because trolls gonna troll, they'll troll anybody. So I'm kind of like, okay, I see that, I get that. But the haters is what got me. The people that was hating on me, that that killed me. That killed me. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> Cause keep in mind, I just got 72 subscribers. So back when I had only 20 subscribers, I had girls trying to throw shots. And I'm like, wait a minute, what? Like literally was less than what I have now. And on average, my videos got like, what, 20 views. So pretty much almost everybody that was subscribed to me was watching my videos, which is good. But you know, that was pretty much all I had going on at the time. That was before my little um, synthetic hair video, that one synthetic hair video, which is still doing numbers. But that was before that one synthetic hair video even hit a thousand views. I had 
so many people. Child, I done had so many people attempt to throw shots at me and it is absolutely crazy. I'm talking about like, I ain't even about to get this girl no attention for real, for real, because she's not that important, number one. Number two, I don't even remember her name. <laughs> I never even took the time to actually look at it, so I don't even know. But there was a point in time where I guess you could say I got into an argument on Twitter with this girl and she called herself throwing an insult about me being a YouTuber. And she had said something along the lines of like, aren't you a YouTuber? You need to focus on getting more subscribers or some shit like that. And I was just taken aback by that because the things that we were even like arguing about it was like that had nothing to do with it, number one. And number two, how was me being a YouTuber an insult? That was weird. Like, that didn't make any sense. And then the biggest kicker of all, th this is the other thing that kills me, right? Because she's not the only one. But tell me why sis watches my videos. I know she watched my videos. And if it ain't her, it's, it's some of her friends. Because right after she had said that and we had our little argument, our little tit for tat or whatever, every single one of my videos went up in views. Now, like I said, on average, I get about 20 views on a video. So when it goes from 20 to 30 or 40 or exactly 20 to 25, come on now. And it's every video, every video then went up, not just the popular ones that's still doing numbers like my Kia or Angels video that's still doing numbers. My synthetic hair reviews, those are still doing numbers because obviously like, okay, technical difficulties y'all, sorry about that. But um, where was I? Let me check my notes. Yeah, so anyways, when I would make those videos, I would always upload it on the place that I bought the hair from. I try to do that with everything that I buy. That way you guys know like, hey, this is actually me. Cause there are certain people that be stealing other people's videos and people pictures and using them. So I'll purposely put it on there myself and use my actual name. That way y'all know like, okay, this is the wig that you are supposed to be buying. So of course that would bring a lot of traction to the video and thus bring in traction to my page. And I would do the same thing for like when I posted it on Instagram and when I posted on Twitter and stuff like that, like I would do stuff like that. So just imagine like you somebody that just talked all this rah rah and you my biggest fan, that's really weird. Like that was really, really odd. She probably watching this video right now and it's just like, why? Like why? <laughs> but once again, she's not the only one. Like she ain't the reason why I'm talking about this right now. She just one that I remember cause that conversation slash argument, whatever that was, it was just, it was weird. But she's not the only one that has done that. Like it's a few people on here where it's like, I would follow them on Instagram or follow them on Twitter. We following each other, we're mutuals. Everybody's chilling, vibing. But then I'll upload a video or I'll like talk to people on Twitter and you see like I'm starting to get a lot of attention or whatever. Anytime I was publicly getting attention for anything or anytime I tried to uplift myself, I always end up peeping that somebody who literally watches my videos or be on my nuts talking about, oh my God, your hair is so pretty, your makeup so cute, where you get your lashes, da 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 da. Like just hyping me to the 10th power. Them the same people that be trying to throw shots at me. And it's just like, I'm a little stupid. I had made a tweet about that, I think yesterday. The way I'm set up, if I talk about somebody, you gonna know, cause I'ma say that. Like, I'ma say it right then and there. But other people, they don't have the balls to do that. They don't say things with their chest, like how I say things with my chest. So it take me a while to even catch the shade sometimes because I'm sitting there like, oh, she ain't talking about me. And then I gotta really marinate it. And I'm like, oh. Oh, she is talking about me. And it's just, it's crazy. It's madness. Like, once again, I'm not that popular. I'm not. I'm not downplaying myself, but I'm just being real. I'm not that popular. I can't even call myself a micro-influencer. I'm pretty much just a random girl that just decided to put stuff on the internet. That's it. That's it. But it's like, it's so crazy that, like, envy and jealousy is so rampant especially nowadays that even an itty bitty bitch like me itty bitty accounts like me got a bitch sitting up with her stomach hurting to the point where she feel like she gotta talk about me it's crazy to me and once again like I said I'm not used to the spotlight and honestly I'm not used to this 
I'm not used to this. I'm used to people talking about me from time to time. I'm used to having a few haters here and there, but at least the haters that I'm familiar with, we was in proximity with each other. Like I went to school with the bitch or something. I don't know y'all. Y'all found me and continue to watch my page and my videos and my TikToks and then turn around and start dogging me out. How does that work? How does that work? Like that is a mental illness, bro. And it just, I'm not going to lie to you. It do be kind of getting to me. It do, because I'm just like, what am I doing that's making you feel some type of way? What am I doing that's really, like, you really getting bent out of shape over what I'm saying and doing? Like, what is that about? Please explain, because I'm lost. And once again, with the trolls, I ain't going to spend too much time on them because they trolls. But like, the amount of trolls that obviously be trolling because they want followers, they want attention. How you getting attention from a bitch with 70 followers? That's what I'm saying. It's mental illness. Cause I'm just, I'm not getting it. The math is not math and I'm very confused, but I ain't about to talk about them no more. <laughs> I'm over it. So I don't want to alarm anybody. Um, but I gotta, I gotta be honest. This reason is also a big reason as to why my content kind of fell off too. Like I said before, I'm not that big of an entity on the internet. I'm not that big of a person on any platform, but I obviously attract people. I attract a certain audience. I attract people with certain interests. So, you know, that's all fine and dandy, nothing wrong with that. But unfortunately, this attention has not only attracted positivity, it hasn't only attracted haters and, and trolls. It has also caused me to be stalked a few times and yeah it um that that's one thing I'm definitely not accustomed to I'm not making this up I have legit had a few people um let, let's just say I've, I've had a few people cross boundaries with me and it just repeatedly keeps happening and it didn't start happening until once again until I put myself on the internet but um yeah it has been more than one occasion where I have had someone come into my personal space and make me feel uncomfortable and it's all because they feel like they know me based off of whatever I post on the internet and I get that like life is about perception so you know, me personally, I know I don't overshare on the internet, so it ain't much that you can say, but the little bits and pieces that I do reveal about myself, there are a few people where they take that to heart and they create their own little narratives and stuff and, and run with it. And when they run with it, they, I, I'm gonna just give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe they don't realize how messed up their mentality is, but it just isn't okay it, it's not it's very uncomfortable and it's extremely uncomfortable when they don't realize that what they're doing is absurd like they don't realize that what they're doing is wrong and just you know like I, I just it really bothers me the last chit chat video that I uploaded on here I had briefly mentioned it but I did it in a very nice way I sugarcoated the hell out of that but when I talked about how you can't get too wrapped up in your fantasies to the point where you can't differentiate fantasy from reality that was what I was referencing because I gotta look back on that time of the video but I'm pretty sure I made that video like a few days after I had ran into one of these stalkers and he he just made me completely uncomfortable. And I posted that video knowing that he was going to see it. He still to this day, y'all, still to this day does not fully get it. I mean, he gets it to the point where I haven't seen him. He gets it to the point to where we haven't crossed paths and I think he, he probably got his little feelings hurt or whatever. But so he hasn't really been much of a problem lately. He's been really dormant, but I did peep that he liked one of my posts and it's possible that he probably liked it on accident but um yeah he liked one of my posts after I had already removed him and pretty much disposed of him on all of my platforms because I'm just like dude you did too much um I haven't talked to him since but 
yeah, I, I made that video around that time, like very shortly after that situation had happened. And when I made the video, I thought I got my point across. And then when I shared the story time about how this guy was like harassing me, like this guy from high school, he was harassing me. I made that with the intentions of entertainment, obviously, but I also was doing it because I also wanted to double down on what I was talking about. Like, this is an example of crossing a boundary. And if you fit into this category, you probably shouldn't do that. And I thought when I did that, it was gonna be finalized. Basically, I didn't went from one stalker to another stalker to another stalker to another stalker. And it's gotten to a point to where, same thing with me overworking myself. I low key was overworking myself because I'm like, at least I know that when I'm at work, I'm surrounded by a bunch of people. And when I'm at home, I'm in my safe space. I stopped really going out like that. I stopped really like stopping at this restaurant to go eat dinner. Like I, I really stopped doing much because these people have made me so uncomfortable and just made me like really, it just, it just gives me this vibe. Like, I don't know what you're capable of doing. And in a way it's like, I know these people ain't gonna do nothing. Like I know they ain't gonna do shit to me, but in the same breath, it's like, you really don't know. Like, like you really don't know. And it's just disturbing. Like, it's just really disturbing. Like, I don't know how you can get adjusted to someone invading your privacy and in invading your boundaries and laughing about the shit. Like, ain't nobody gonna be comfortable with that. But the only reason I'm doing it now is because I feel like the fact that I didn't actually call it out and address it the first time and call it for exactly what it was, that's kind of why I'm in the situations that I keep getting into because that ain't something that you should coat. That ain't something that you be nice about. And I was just being nice because the, the guy that I was referring to, like I was familiar with him, but I don't know him. Like I, I don't know him at all. Like like we're not friends, we were never friends. So I was kind of nice about it because I'm like, I don't wanna, you know, make him feel that uncomfortable, but it's just like, no, no, like you gotta say it, you gotta say it or else they're not gonna get it. And even after, even after I say it, that ain't gonna stop nobody. If they wanna stalk you, they gonna stalk you, unfortunately. Like it ain't much we can do about it. But in the same breath, it's like, if I say it, if I really put a stamp on it, put a name on it, like really call it what it is, it might make some people be like, oh, okay, I, I, okay. Cause don't nobody want to be called a stalker. But yeah, like it's just, it's been happening y'all. It's been happening and I just haven't been talking about it. But like, that is also a reason why like I just been kind of out of it. Cause it's just like, I don't want these people interacting with me. I don't want these people talking to me. I don't want them seeing what I'm doing right now. And I know what you guys are saying. Like, oh, just hit the block button. Like, bro, you don't understand. They're stalkers. I can hit the block button. They gonna find a way. Like, it's just, it's bad, bro. It's bad. It's one thing if we just like randomly bump into each other, you know, but when you're purposely calculating when you're going to leave the house so that you have an excuse to bump into me and have a conversation with me, that's a problem. Like that shit is not okay. That shit is not cool. You don't come up to people and ask them if they live by themselves or if they live with their parents. You don't, you don't do shit like that. And it's like, yeah, I just came on the internet and said like, yeah, I still live at home with my mom, but it's just like, once again. I'm doing that because I volunteered that information. When you're purposely like looking at my background and shit like that, trying to figure it out for yourself, that is disturbing. That's really disturbing, bro. Like, you no, you should never feel that comfortable. So I am, um, I'm just gonna call it what it is now. If, if you make me uncomfortable, I'm gonna call you exactly what you are. I'm gonna call you a stalker. So just be warned, watch the videos and just watch the video. That's it don't don't oh this my girlfriend in my head don't do none of that watch the video and that is it and just be thankful that you're not blocked because i i i can't do that like i'm i'm literally like it makes me uncomfortable and even with me talking about it i kind of got jitters like it really is disturbing y'all like i'm not bullshitting it's just we just gonna move on because i got other things to talk about 
Oh, let me talk about this one, child. Let me talk about this one because I've been wanting to get this off my chest for a while. Okay, so when I started doing YouTube, like I said, I started getting a lot of traction, not only on this page, but on other platforms because that's where I usually promote myself, right? Right, okay, we already established that. So with me getting traction, I have also been getting a lot of people that also do YouTube or are hoping to do YouTube that have also found my content, found my Instagram and Twitter and whatever. And they'll come together and say like, oh yeah, let's network. So when you network, basically we sub for sub, which means that I subscribe to them, they subscribe to me. We'll like watch how everyone's uploading their videos and as soon as they upload, like the video. I've only been in one group chat. I've only been in one group chat, but yeah, like I'll be in a group chat where we're trying to like get our engagement up or we're trying to get our subscriber count up. Like we're just all people that decided to come together and help each other promote. Honey, when I tell you probably one of the worst decisions I have ever made in my life, and I'm so serious. Cause let me tell you about these, these, these YouTube friends, right? Okay. So similar to me talking about the haters and the trolls, some of these YouTuber friends is low key haters too. Yeah, yeah, some of them are haters as well. Now, like I said, I ain't nobody. I ain't nobody, I ain't got that many people, you feel me? Like I still gotta build my stuff up just like the next chick, you feel me? I gotta do the same thing. But when I sit up here and I tell somebody I do YouTube, or if somebody decides to describe me as a YouTuber, I'm serious about that. So when you go on my page, there's going to be videos, plural. You're going to scroll. You're gonna be able to scroll down my catalog and you're going to see content, okay? And like I said, I ain't as consistent as I used to be, but back when I was consistent, yes, you're probably gonna get about two videos within one week. You're probably gonna get one video at least every week or every other week. Yes, because that is what you do. You make videos and you upload them and you don't necessarily have to be on a schedule, but it helps. So like I said, we would come together in these little group chats and in these little talking sessions or whatever. And we would come in and be like, yeah, we're gonna subscribe to each other, like each other's content, leave comments, blah, blah, blah. Honey, when I tell you I was the only one that was liking, I was the only one commenting and that sub for sub you just help the subscriber count go up but you ain't do shit you might as well have just been a random viewer you might as well have just been a unique view you feel me you might as well have just been there because what are you here for and i swear i'm not trying to sound full of myself i'm not trying to be like a evil bitch or anything but the reason why i say it like some of these girls are haters it is hater shit it is because i'm sorry i'm not one of them people where I made two YouTube videos two years ago and I'm working on one video for three months and I'm just now uploading it and I expect everybody to go over there and like it. Like, that's not me. I said that, yeah, I'm trying to build my subscriber count, do this, do that, whatever, whoop de whoop de whoop I meant that. But because, oh, everyone else is uploading one video a month or one video every two months, three months. You looking at me and it's like, dang, she uploads so much. I ain't gonna keep liking her stuff. I'm not gonna keep watching it. Then why are you here? Why are you here? Like shout out to the people that really are here, here and they participate. And you know, me and y'all, we still in contact with each other. But come on now, like some of y'all just unsubscribe, like for real, because you're taking up space. You don't even need to be here. And I mean that in the deepest way possible. Cause like child, it just, it's stupid. It's not same thing with the gimmicks i don't judge nobody i ain't ever passed judgment on nobody i've never called nobody out and said oh this is stupid don't do this don't do that never never i was kicking it i was chilling but once again with the gimmicks the little public interviews and the oh i'm gonna make a story time about the time i got cheated on nobody cares nobody cares stop it them 10 minute vlogs of you just walking around target I don't want to see that shit but because we supposed to be networking and we supposed to be friends and cool or whatever here i go sitting there watching it so you can get your little watch time liking it so that the algorithm notices it all that other stuff commenting trying to be relatable trying to hype you up you know i'm, I'm trying to help i'm bored of shit 
but I'm doing my part. I'm playing my part. I upload a video that I actually took time to create. It got little pictures and slides and whooshes and sound effects. And I didn't took the time to pick out a soundtrack and only two of y'all like it. And I get the same people that view my page, just, just the same exact amount of people. Yeah, yeah, I'm fed up. I'm fed up. So I'm not even gonna lie, even with that, I was just kind of like, bro, because that, that makes me feel unmotivated. Because as much as I want to in the future collab with other people and do videos and link ups with other people that are YouTubers and definitely get more YouTuber friends because sometimes I feel like I'm just alone. I just be contemplating it. I really do. So like now when I promote a video and I get that little DM on Instagram, that be like sub for sub, do you wanna be YouTuber buddies? I'm just so hesitant. Like I don't wanna be funky. I don't want to take nobody away from their dreams. I don't want to just like dismiss nobody. But y'all, when I tell you, I just, I, I get an attitude every time I see a message like that. Every single time. Every time I see somebody comment up under my video, at, like just, it just make me not want to do it no more. It just make me not want to do it no more because it's like, baby, what are, what are we doing? Like, are you actually going to participate? Are you actually going to be here? Because if not, just go on. Just get away, just get away, please. So my last and final reason as to why and how I fell off. When I tell you some of these algorithms are the absolute devil, they are the devil. They are the devil. They are the devil. So let's first start off with Instagram child because, pff. okay. So I'm gonna take y'all all the way back. This was when I first started being consistent, uploading. This is where a lot of y'all actually found me, to be honest, like that that's where a lot of y'all came from. Back in the back back days, I used to upload on Instagram and I would literally be in my pajamas. I nine times out of 10 had my natural hair out because that was before I even started wearing wigs. Then during quarantine, you know, I was experimenting. I was experimenting with different hairstyles. I didn't do some twist where I'm looking at that like, girl, you know, that was ugly, but it was a learning experience. But I just go out of my way to say that because those pictures, those pictures that I'm talking about, those pictures that I'm thinking of, those are the pictures where I got like 100 to close to 200 likes. I had a normal flow of people that were engaging with my photos and seeing my photos. So now, now that I'm a little bit more understanding of how the algorithm works exactly and oh, let me be serious about my content this time and actually put outfits together and make sure my hair is neat and fresh. Let me make sure that it's light outside or I'm using my ring light correctly. Let me make sure I got the good angles. Now that I'm actually doing what everybody else be doing on their Instagram, like actually putting in the work, why am I at most getting like 15 likes? Like, like what's going on? What What's happening? And y'all, like I kid you not, it all started back in like May of 2020. I kid you not. It started back in May 2020. Once again, if, if you want all of the tea of all of my business, you have to follow me on Instagram because that's where everything is. So to those that remember, let me let me remind y'all. There was a point in time around the time that I was making the Key or Angels video that my page ended up being blocked. And I had no idea as to why it was being blocked, but they basically blocked my video completely. Not my video, I mean my account. But yeah, they blocked my account. I don't know why they did that, but they blocked my account. And I had to wait pretty much the whole entire month. I couldn't promote the Key or Angels video like I wanted to. It still did decent, but it should have gotten more views than that if we're being honest. But I wasn't promoting it like I wanted it to. I wasn't allowed to post on my page. I wasn't allowed to like nobody post. I wasn't allowed to do nothing. And it really came out the blue. And I remember I was sitting there like, why is this happening? Like, why did that just happen? And I remember some dude, he was low key trying to talk to me. So I kind of dismissed what he was talking about. Cause I'm just like, boy, shut up. Okay. And then I hate people that be talking about stuff that they don't know what they are talking about. Like he couldn't even articulate himself. He couldn't even explain what he was saying, but I'll never forget this one dude. He came into my DMs and he said, it's because you're not one of these IG thoughts. 
So they trying to get those accounts out of here so that they can get more traction. Now, I don't necessarily agree exactly with what he said because it's not all the way there. But after I sat back and I realized what was going on, it was a little bit of truth to what he was saying. But once again, he couldn't articulate himself. Instagram has it set up to where people that already have a following are getting more followers. They don't have it set up to where the people that could potentially get followers are getting followers. They don't have it set up to where the people that just want to follow their friends and family can even see their post. That's why they got rid of the chronological timeline because they wanted the people that get the most traction to be on the home page and to be at the top when you log into Instagram. So what he was saying, even though at the time it sounded like a load of bullshit, he was actually telling the truth. And that's exactly what Instagram is doing. That's why it's so hard for some of your, your posts to get noticed. And it's even certain people that have a whole bunch of followers where their pages are dying. Like Instagram's entire algorithm is just, it just it's weird like i'm currently trying to like watch a few videos to learn about it because i'm really trying to like revive my page i really don't want to delete my page i got a lot of memories on there but yeah like instagram got like three different algorithms running at the same time and it's just like who are we even doing this for what are we even doing like i just i don't understand but not only that, I'm thinking like with that, it's like, oh, okay, I can overcome it, you know, because once again, it's just the algorithm. So that's what I was doing, right? That's what I was doing. Y'all, as of lately, they have been getting rid of certain little tools and stuff on my account. I have been not too long ago, they keep trying to flag some of my videos for like copyright and all this other stuff. And I'm sitting there like, y'all ain't never cared about this before. You ain't never pay attention to my page that much. What's going on? So around the time that I had posted, I think that video of like the outfits that I didn't get to wear on my birthday trip, around that time, they ended up sending me a notification saying that I was no longer allowed to use like branded content tools. And I'm sitting there like, what are we talking about? Minutes later, I get a, a temporary flag on that video because it uses a uh, Dolce's persuasive song. And for some reason, Dochi's song is like copyrighted to the max. So I posted that on YouTube too. And YouTube even flagged it. It was like a temporary, like a halfway flag. Like, okay, certain people are going to be able to view it in these countries. But the people that live in Russia and like one other country, they won't see it. I don't give a damn about them people. That's fine. Like play the video. But now it's at a point to where it's completely zero. And Instagram was actually the first person that was like, no like just straight up no it wasn't no temporary partially no it was just a no okay after i had uploaded that they took away some of my branded content so those anonymous questions i don't have that the add to your story button i don't have that and it's like one other button that i forget but yeah like it, it's certain things that i just don't have access to and I posted not too long ago that I had actually emailed Instagram because I'm trying to figure out like what's going on with my account. Let me know because they literally only do this when I get like attraction to my page. Like they only do this when I'm starting to get people paying attention to me. They'll find something the matter with my, my account. And it's just like, why are y'all doing this? Why are y'all doing this? I feel like it's a deeper motive because this don't make no sense. It just don't. So yeah, with Instagram, I have been completely discouraged and it's the same thing low key for TikTok because I did notice with TikTok too, when you start getting a lot of attention, oh child, they don't like you getting attention. My first video that went viral, which was the one about, um, you know, like the people from Ohio reacting to people from outside of Ohio. When I first uploaded that video, if y'all can remember, they actually deleted the video and I had to appeal it and then they brought it back. But once they brought it back, that sound had been trending for like a good minute a good little minute and then after i hit like probably 13k they took the sound away like the sound is completely muted and i'm just sitting there like yeah i was letting white people use this but now i'm using it and it's a problem now it's removed what's up with that and sweetie we not even gonna talk about youtube because at this point everybody fed up everybody and their mama is fed up with youtube like <laughs> We not even, I, I don't even like kicking people when they down. So YouTube, I'm going to spare you. I'm going to spare you. But one of these days, I'm going to come back and I'm going to talk about you bad. I'm going to talk about you real bad. But yeah, like these algorithms just been, 
killing me. They've been killing me because I low key just feel unmotivated to even give y'all stuff. Cause it's like, what's the point of me putting in all this work and half of y'all ain't even going to see it. 95% of y'all ain't even going to see it. Why? Why? If there's no chance for me to grow unless I go on Facetune and, and give myself contour, what's the point? If I don't get push unless I do a prank, what's the point? If I don't do them little hip hip TikTok dances, what's the point? If I don't dye my hair blonde and get skinny overnight, what's the point? What's the point? Because that's exactly how these algorithms got your girl feeling. Like, it's just everything I put out is pointless at this point. And I just don't feel like I should put in all this effort and put in all this work and care about the quality. Because y'all clearly don't care. That's clearly not what your platform wants to see. So, yeah. Yeah. But anyways, y'all, that is the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Feel free to leave any of your comments down below, personal opinions, all of that. Shout out to the people that have subscribed despite the fact that it's been a minute since I've uploaded. Shout out to the people that are currently still subscribed and watching this channel because I really do appreciate y'all. Like, I really do. I, I, we here, okay? We here. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and of course, share if you can. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time. But you won't.